I can make it even bigger. <laughs> oh my God. Hey everyone, welcome to episode two of the Tunes and Tunes podcast. I'm Chris at Carlone C Music, your host. Today's show is brought to you by shapingwaves.com. If you're a creator or filmmaker and you need sound assets like ambiances, room tones, or very specific high quality sound effects bundles for your projects, please check out this huge catalog of bundles in my description. If you use my referral link, it'll help out the podcast greatly. So check that out, buy some of those high quality products. And speaking of high quality products and people, my guest today, renowned pioneer in the story time animation genre, avid DVDR and rock climbing enthusiast on YouTube with 7 million subscribers and his animations with combined views over 1 billion. He's the man. We have Domix Comics here. Welcome, Dom. <laughs> I don't know how to follow up with that. That's like that's pretty epic. way too grand. I practice it. I practice it. But, yeah. All right, Dom. Listen, to start off the show real easy, just a nice light warm up question. Yeah, what's up? How much money do you make? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Please don't. Answer. Technically, I don't make money. <laughs> yeah. I earn it. Don't. All oh, right, right. <laughs> don't answer that. Uh, no. Dom, this means a lot to me to have you on here. Um, because we we've been uh we've been working together for a while do you do you know how long we've been working together well you know the answer i'm a, I'm a guess because it's it's definitely at least four years yeah yeah actually on may 16th it hit like the five-year mark oh yeah which was i always remember that because it's Wait, my birthday 2015? may 16th hit the five-year mark Dang. um and and oh, wait that's when we started on your birthday <laughs> yeah on my birthday yeah what a birthday <laughs> gift well that's when your first video of of uh oh, okay. my music went up um and do you know what video what that birthday? was oh, five years ago dude <laughs> i know oh. this is cruel to me like i i don't even know my own i, I don't even know the last like five videos i uploaded <laughs> it was sweat sweat yeah Actually, that doesn't feel too long ago that's weird yeah yeah it was it was, i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure uh, I'm pretty forgetful with my own content. It's kind of sad. Like I'll remember specific ones, mm -hmm. thinking it's like more recent, but it was really like eight years ago or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then there's ones that were like last year, and then I'm like, oh, I made that. Yeah, I mean, you've been you've been uploading for a while. Your first one, <laughs> do you know what your first video uploaded is? 2012. Yeah, it was, yeah it's uh, rural. Rural, 15 seconds long. Yeah, and can't it, forget it. for me, that's such a good precursor for your channel. It's just you taking a, a simple thought, something that's normal, and being like, hey, isn't this kind of weird when you think about it? <laughs> and for me, that just that that's like if I had to put a log line <clears throat> on your channel, that would be the log line. Like, hey, <laughs> hey it's all these weird? normal <laughs> things. But, um, that's kind of the premise like of, of even when I started my comics. Like a lot of the comics were just, hey, isn't this a weird thought? And then I just, I guess, uh, materialize it into a few panels and see how it goes. Right, because you you studied with just panel comics, right? Yeah, yeah. So since since then, we have worked on sixty six videos together. I'm pretty sure. Which that is, makes sense because it was like one to two videos a month for yeah. five years. Yep. Yeah. And I there I I only missed a couple because you know I was in Europe or something or traveling or something. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, as a composer, I'm very gracious for the steady gig and writing for you is always such a treat because I always get to practice different styles of music. <laughs> yeah, well, and, you're like super dependable. So thank you. dude. Who else am I going to go to, man? I only <laughs> no, have there's thousands out there. I'm <laughs> sure you could find one really easily. You could find one in the comments of this podcast. Um, but I remember that video coming out on my birthday like five years ago. And then looking back, I got like 10 million views and my I'm just being like oh crap because i didn't know 10 million people were gonna listen to that i'm like oh i would have i would have worked harder but i'm i i go back and i nitpick my stuff you, you're probably the same do you ever cringe when you see older videos well yeah right after i uploaded it i watched it and i'm like oh no that could have been better or, yeah like you catch all the mistakes and and whatnot right yeah that's that's with every creator i found i was just talking to axtilis about that too it's hard to uh not 
beat yourself up, even in, when you're in the middle of a project too. You have such a great idea, and then when you make it tangible, you're like, ah, it's not so great anymore. Yeah, yeah, I've had a lot of like times like that where I'd write up a script and it's just not good. But then when I revisit it a couple months later, I was like, oh, this, this was a good basis. Why did why did I drop this? Yeah, and then yeah, it's good to revisit it too. Sometimes you can make some ideas, give a rebirth, to some ideas. Um, so when, when I first reached out to you, my first email I ever sent you, I just think this is so funny to reminisce on this was, I, I, I was in, remember. I was in grad school and, uh, I was, you know, I had a degree in music finishing up my second degree in music. And I really wanted to start writing <clears> music <throat> for stuff on December 8th, 2014, I shot you an email and just said, there's no link. There's no demo reel. There's nothing. It was just like, Hey dude, I, can I write music for you? And I, I, I can't believe, it, but you actually, you responded a little bit later and you're like, yeah, sure. Send me stuff. And I was like, oh crap, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta, make, I gotta make stuff to you. I think I got, I got this far. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I was like, oh, should I whistle into the microphone? <laughs> um, so, and then. What, what were you hoping I'd reply with? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> maybe I was looking for the, the kick in the butt to like make stuff or, or, you know, when you, you try something new and you just kind of try it. And you're like, mm -hmm. hey, let me just see if I'm bad at this. You almost hope you're bad at it. So you like don't have to do it. No, I'm just kidding. I, I'm yeah, very grateful I that I, I found this. Um, but then in, in October, you know, you replied and you're like, yeah, send me something. I finally wrote something. When I go back and listen to it, I absolutely cringe. But I, I wrote something. I send it to you. And just radio silence. <laughs> and I, I know you're a busy guy. But I, I was like, oh, oh, God, I, I wrote something bad. And then at April 2015, I sent you an email and I thought this so, like, was so funny. All it said was, I won't give up. Let me write music for you. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I do not suggest anyone who wants to be a composer or work with creatives on here to badger people they want to work with. <laughs> Please don't do that. I just got lucky in my case. I finally had a demo reel. And then once we got going, we didn't start. So thank you, Dom, for giving me a chance I, I, on that. I didn't, I didn't like test you on purpose. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, I probably just like forgot about it. But then I saw your determination. I was like, damn, this, this, guy <laughs> this guy's like, going to be perfect. outside my house soon, like <laughs> with a boom box. <laughs> Let me write music for you. Protagonist energy. Dude. Yeah. So, Dom, you went to school for architecture. Um, yeah. how, how much of that experience and, and the education I, that you received? Yep. I don't know if I really went to school. It's more like I endured school. Right. Okay. <laughs> Right. So maybe that answers the, the, the end of the question, which is yeah. just how much preparation do you feel that's given you for your everyday life right now? Right now? Uh, preparation, probably not much. Uh, but like, I guess, inspiration of content a lot. Um, but I, I don't think I, I would credit that credit that to, to like architecture, you know, or the schooling. Right. That's so just the experiences the of, you know, the, the school life. I probably would have had other experiences if I pursued a different career. Mm -hmm. So, so the skills you learn there don't transfer. No, I don't think so. Like even before I went into architecture school, like I was already like an avid like artist. Like I, I drew my whole life, and architecture was kind of like a second answer for what to pursue. It, it was kind of like a halfway meeting with, with my parents because you know they they didn't think just a regular artist or animator would would make a good future mm -hmm. um but yeah but but once i got into architecture i was like i don't think this is a good alternative either mm. like they're kind of on the same boat like I, I think as an architect it's kind of hard to find uh a, like a, a comfy job you know from like the people i've talked to anyway yeah I was in yeah hard hard to find a comfy job for most things yeah, um, creative, true. definitely. I even, even YouTube, honestly. Yeah, like, and in like music, in, in, in music like, school, they just they literally our professors sometimes would sit us down and be like, "So you're gonna be poor?" <laughs> <laughs> and I I disagree with that. Now I think there's plenty of ways to market yourself in music. You just gotta yeah. be smart about it. Like we're in this digital age now. Like you could you just gotta talk to you just gotta badger people, and never give up. <laughs> Um, okay, in 2012, you animated a series called Game Stain. Was that your first experience no. animating for kind of a bigger <laughs> Please, project? Game Stain was, um, I guess, 
just one of those side jobs, you know. Like I got offers and whatnot. Like my, my YouTube channel was still growing at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, I did get a a pretty big like boost by bringing in like my Tumblr followers from the comics, but it wasn't enough to really call YouTube a steady job. So I needed it to take side gigs like Game Stain and uh, Fetch Quest. I, I don't even know if anyone remembers like a lot of this stuff. I'm surprised you brought it up. Why would you bring back such a dark memory? <laughs> Deep diving, man. Hey, you know what? It's not dark if it gets you on the path to where you're at now. You know? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just the rock it. you climbed. <laughs> Speaking of rock climbing, I mean, sitting and animating all day or sitting writing music, it's it's hard on the body. Is, is rock climbing what you do to kind of like get out, break up the day? Yeah. I mean, like I, I'm always like, trying to find new ways to like keep active especially right now when we're all just stuck inside uh rock climbing was i don't know it was also kind of something i wanted to try to get into but never really had a group of friends to really like encourage me or to do it with um but yeah like i met some people two years ago and uh, they introduced me to rock climbing and you know helped me out with like like beginner techniques and whatnot so but the gyms are closed now can you do it outside <laughs> oh hell no <laughs> or try, my, try to climb my house or something that's like bouldering right you need like the yeah, harness and stuff harness the one with the harness is called top roping um but no i i don't think i'd ever do like wilderness climbing mm-hmm. it's too scary. you're more you're more of like a an urban climber like break into it a, a mcdonald's play place or chicken and cheese and <laughs> i actually like want to want to do free running too but like you know i don't really live in a neighborhood that allows that yeah i'm in the suburbs like when my <laughs> climb like the 7-eleven or something <laughs> that's scary stuff <laughs> and i don't i don't have super long legs so i'd, I'd be intimidated to jump yeah, from neither. building to building <laughs> well if it's like a meter gap yeah i'm down for those right not, like, you know, i just i just have that fear like like when you hit the the boundary of a level in a video game like it, you just hit like a glass invisible glass wall and you just fall <laughs> You, no matter how small the gap is, I'm just so worried that I'd like hit that. Yeah, very irrational. Well, that's the idea with free falling, you just have to toss that fear away. You know, it's like full confidence. Oh my god, or not even confidence. It's like a level of ignorance. Yeah, right. So, how are you doing with the with the lockdown and not uh, not going outside so much? Yeah, it's affected like my sanity, of course. Like, mm-hmm. I, I assume it's the same for everyone else. Just trying to keep busy with you know, content and video games, video games, definitely helping playing a lot of animal crossing. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. If this happened, like, like what, 20 years ago when internet wasn't really that developed, I I think everyone would either die or go insane. Right. Even 20 years ago, I think I was rocking some old school runescape 20 years ago. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, this, it's a tough time. It's also a, t- it's a time you feel as a creative, you kind of feel urgency because you're like, Oh God, I have time now. So I, I need I to be creating, but sometimes that's yeah. the hardest time to motivate yourself is when you're not on that busy schedule. Exactly. It, like you, it, I don't know. The days have kind of started to seem redundant now. And it's like kind of hard to find inspiration because you know, I can't go out and find inspiration. Right. You just kind of have to think about stuff. I know. And it's, it's saturated too. You're, you're like kind of sick of hearing it and you're sick of being worried about it too. Like I, I read that, you know, if you have, if you have, if you're sick, you, you lose your sense of like taste and something. So even like the other day I, I, w- I woke up in like a cold sweat and I was like, Oh my God, do I have it? And my, my first reaction was to lick my pillow to see if I have like a sense of like taste. And Is that uh, one of the symptoms? yeah, if you, like, if you don't have a sense of smell or taste, they say that's a symptom. Um, so here I am at like 1 a.m. A few extra seconds licking something else, but you went for your pillow. I, I went for my pillow, and, and, and then there's that brief moment of panic, like, oh, my God, why doesn't it taste like I don't like know what pillows taste what, like. Why doesn't it taste like anything? <laughs> <laughs> and I realized, okay, it's because it's a clean pillow. So, yeah, if you if you can relate to that, you're not alone. Um, okay. Uh, I'm going to sprinkle in an either or. Ready? Rapid fire. Either or. And let's just do or for this one. Steak or sushi, Dom? Oh, my God. Sushi. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Pizza or burritos? Pizza. Classical or jazz? Classical. Ooh, interesting choice, Dom. Really? <laughs> yeah. I don't, don't think, look too deep into that. Like, I, 
Interesting. First instinct choice. I find I find that interesting. Do you know that uh, they did a study? They gave rats cocaine and they had them like <laughs> they separated rooms to play okay. like okay. They separated rooms to play like classical and jazz music, and almost all the rats picked the jazz music room. <laughs> <laughs> So you're saying I don't do cooking. Yeah, I think that's I think we've reached that analysis. Same thing. <laughs> um, okay, so you, now you own a cafe, the the GG Gaming Cafe, right? Is that, that the name? Mm -hmm. So what led you to want to open a cafe? Um, it was kind of it was a pretty random idea actually. I mean during that time I was getting into board games, like more mm -hmm um recent board games I, I don't mean just like monopoly and stuff like that like it, it was kind of weird discovering how there's there were all, all these like new games um and so i really got into them and one summer i was just talking with my family and my and my sisters and it just came out it's like hey there's there's not really anything like in our city you want to you want to make a board game <laughs> okay yeah like <clears throat> Like the concept of the board game cafe wasn't that new at the time. Um, like I think the first board game cafe I went to was while I was still in school, actually. So they've been around for a while, but they were mostly in like downtown Toronto, not really in the suburbs where I live. So and I and I figured we 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 need more, like recreational stuff in our city. They were slowly taking down like all the arcades I grew up with. So right. I'm like. What, what do we even do here now? Yeah, just like a, even local movie theaters getting shut down. It's like when you want to go outside, yeah. it seems like a great option. Get a group of friends, sit down. Yeah, have and, and we open in such a good neighborhood too because it's, it's like near a bunch of schools and stuff. And it's really accessible, you know, walking distance. So do you get a lot of, is, is business, what well, was business good before, you know? The... <laughs> oh, it's terrible now. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, before, I hope so. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was. It's pretty. It was pretty steady. I mean, it definitely got quieter during like when school started because obviously, you know, all the kids are are at school. Right. Um, but weekends always like blew up, and we usually get full house on Saturdays. Nice. Yeah, I would just I was saying I hope so in the sense that not that I hope your business is getting is 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 bad <laughs> I, just that i'm glad that there's not people like picketing outside like we demand that you reopen we need to play settlers of Catan immediately no. dom even even if we were like i don't know how to manage that because like everyone I, I don't trust everyone to have clean hands you know they'll be touching all the all the pieces, pieces and whatnot. like that's too much to manage yeah so i don't even know like when would be a good time to open after all this like luckily, luckily enough, my city is actually kind of decently okay in terms of cases. Mm -hmm. um, but but yeah, it's still scary. It is. It is. Yeah, well, how's it, how is it there? Like where you are? Yeah, it's it's you know I'm kind of near New York City, so it's not hot. Uh, <laughs> oh it, yeah, it's it's you not got, not going. Is, is New York like the top right now in America? Like top state for cases? Yeah, it's not great. I think that's the final <laughs> assumption. It's not like uh, it's not like, hey, you want to go like see Times Square right now? Mm -hmm. Like, how often do you even leave the house? I I I'm lucky. I live in like kind of like the woods, so I I go running like every day. I oh, try cool. to get out. Um, I don't live like in the city. Um, so I'm I'm grateful for that because for minimal interaction. Yeah, because if I couldn't like get out and just stretch my legs or like put yeah. my feet in grass, I would be sad. <laughs> oh, grass. Yeah. Just grow up some inside your, your place. Obviously. Yeah, have like a little Zen garden. Yeah. Dude, I think that the, this is going to evolve into people are going to start to do crazy stuff. And, and I, I always think about will, will there be people who just never come back? Like things reopen. There's just people who are just like, you know what? I, I got used to this. <laughs> I'm good. I'm perma quarantined the rest of my life. I did. I did a short film about that called Hikakomori. I, I don't know if that's the word, but it's like Japanese people who are recluses. They they stay in an apartment all day. They have things ordered. They never leave the house. Oh, that's that's a recipe for depression. Yeah. yeah. And they're like, oh, yeah, they have a huge depression rate. And, and it's like, well, no, duh. They're not. They don't see the sun. <laughs> yeah. Sad. Crazy stuff. 
All right, Dom, we're here at the 20 minute mark. That means it's time for the one minute power draw session. Every time I say this session, the name changes. It's the one minute draw, the challenge, the power minute draw, the part that our Spotify listeners really love. (laughs) Uh, Okay, so like, should I be recording my screen or are you gonna? I'm gonna record it. Okay. I've got it. Okay. All right, Dom. Um, let, me, let me know if you see this. I see it perfectly. It's beautiful. This is where the magic happens. All right, Dom. The first one-minute draw challenge. Let me get my timer ready because I, I'm going to be kind of hard Hopefully on you. Hopefully, I'm cultured enough to know what it is. I didn't pick. Dude, there are some crazy suggestions. I <laughs> did not pick a lot of those. At Jack Penaloza writes, a turkey with shoes. One minute on the clock, a turkey with shoes. Dom, go. Okay. Uh, what did turkey? They're just like chickens, right? So I'm just gonna draw a generic shape. I know you draw turkeys like with like your hands, like mm-hmm. in grade school. So oh no, okay. okay. Um, do they have that little like chin testicle thing? Dude, I, I why are you asking me, man? I, I just write the music for this. I don't... Uh, you're right. Okay. <laughs> I don't turkey. know. I just eat them. Oh, you know? be, I forgot, yeah. Actually, every oh. dating website I've ever, or not website, every dating app I've ever gone on, I have this one picture of me basting a turkey, and I always use that. <laughs> and like, I always get comments like, uh, oh, he can cook. It's like, yeah, my, <laughs> my mom made it. <laughs> I don't know what kind of shoes to. Maybe if I'm like these like, fancy shoes. Oh, yeah. Some clogs. Yeah. It's a tap dance in turkey. Yeah, let's go. 10 seconds left already i didn't get a chance to color them here i'll I'll give them this generic color there you go beautiful oh with two seconds to spare everybody Uh. Woo! it's the (laughs) tap dancing turkey with oh my god i don't even want to talk about what that under his chin looks like okay it's uh you know it's another turkey (laughs) that's the what is that called the 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 giblets the gib gizzard anyway okay for them (laughs) next i need to know the term for them yeah i think it's gizzard no, nah, they're chin testicles. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, next. You ready for the next one? Okay, one sec. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Next one is from at Miasmatic. She wants to see thick. I know what this is. Yeah, she wants to see thick Dom. <laughs> oh, okay. Thick well, with T H I C C. Thick yes. Dom. It, there you go. Dom, when he can't rock climb for a little bit, it becomes Dom, a ch- when he turns into the rock. <laughs> In this episode, you have to climb him. <laughs> I gotta climb myself before I climb the mountain. Yeah. That's the true test. Oh, my God. I love that. For our Spotify listeners, uh, he's he's just drawing a picture of... Um, of a big old beach ball of a person here. <laughs> and for continuity, I will also give myself clogs. Yes. I'm thick, but I guess I skip leg day, so my legs are just <laughs> sticks. <laughs> thick Dom. Look at him. That's it. That's the minute. Oh my god. He's gi- okay, he's like- gigantic. <laughs> Dude, it looks like someone put a bike pump in you in one of your holes, <laughs> one of your orifices, and just started pumping. And then, it didn't go and, to my legs. And no d- didn't stop. Yeah, and it didn't go to your legs. Thick Dom, everybody. <laughs> there you go. That's something I hope I don't have to see for a while. Uh, okay, next one. For this next one, I'm going to ask you some or questions, some more or questions while you do it. Is this lightning round again? To make it hard, this is one minute lightning round. This is from. At Orange Box 212. I pick cocaine. He wants to see, he wants to see a toaster. A toaster. A toaster. One minute on the clock. Toaster, go. And you have to answer these questions. Um, weekly uploads or monthly uploads? Uh, monthly. Uh, live in a shoe or live in a giant peach? Uh, peach. Oh, it'd be it sticky, like dude. Fun. Wrong choice. Uh, guitar Hero or DDR? DDR. Easy. Smash Bros or Animal Crossing? Smash Bros. Ooh, okay. You need to tell me the second choice. Yeah, okay. Toon Boom or Adobe? <sighs> Adobe. Okay. With with regret. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Nickelodeon or Cartoon Network? Cartoon Network. Okay, nice. Oh, wait, I don't know. That's tough. SpongeBob. Yeah, I know. You're going to give up SpongeBob? It, it's Nickelodeon. pretty hard. To, it's pretty hard for me, too. For SpongeBob. Right, right. 10 seconds on the clock. Oh, he's already done. I'm already done, dude. Oh, my God. With 10 That's seconds so to tough. spare. A Domix toaster. You can buy it now on Bed Bath and Domix and Beyond. <laughs> Look at that toaster. It's Beautiful. Also thick on, on the side. Oh my god. With clogs. He's everywhere. It's like coronavirus. You can't escape it. Just... <laughs> Everyone's well, gonna get the thick that. virus. <laughs> okay, last one, Dom. Ready? Last one. Yeah. Here we go. At Rocker Pool wants to see you draw a duck saying pathetic. What's with these birds, man? I don't know. Oh, yeah, that, that, that is another Ducks bird. Ducks are just turkeys also, right? Yeah. So I'm going to draw the same shape, but without the, the hand tail. What kind of tail is it? Whatever. Let's have like a little, like, little point tail. Like that, Whatever right? you draw here, I'm going to send to Nintendo to be a DLC villager oh, for Animal Crossing. <laughs> oh, that's nice. What does that look like? And I know they have like web feet, so I gotta, you know, super. Oh my! Oh my god! <laughs> the perspective. You got the thick webs, dude. You know, as someone one... who just tickles the ivories, it's it's awesome to see people go through this process. I'm like, I'm baffled. Oh my gosh! I think Ten they have seconds. claws too, right? Yeah, I'll give them like little mini claws. They don't clip their nails. Oh, yeah, in a wing. Sick. And he's done. On the, water. Oh, my gosh. The duck, everyone. Oh, he's, he's not, not saying pathetic, though. <laughs> Quick, give me a pathetic. Oh, yeah, he's saying it. Oh, God. <laughs> he's a duck, so you're not going to understand it. He's yeah. trying to say He it. can't type, people. He's trying to. So you, you just talk. hear that huh sound, but he's I love, quacking it. I love how you used Comic Sans for that. That's <laughs> <laughs> All right, the 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 one minute twenty power draw session, Spotify users' favorite listening portion complete. Thank you, Dom. Well done. Audience goes hard. wild. Let, let's get a preview of those boys. We got the duck. We got okay. thick toaster, Dom. Okay, we got the turkey. That's my favorite. This one. That's good because like I could just rotate him any. Oh my god. <laughs> I can make him even thicker. Oh my god. <laughs> We got a toaster. Wow. The duck. It's not even in the water. He's just standing on the water. Because that's how pathetic everyone else is that they need to tread water, but he doesn't. Jesus, duck. Just, yeah. Jesus, duck. All right. Nice, Tom. Fantastic. You can close that stream here. <laughs> you can no more. Look at it the whole no more. The I don't want to look at it. Get it away. Get it out of here. Get him out of here. So Dom, what do you do? You ever see yourself doing some sort of like network show or some some sort of uh, studio work where your your work ends up televised? Um, yeah, I mean, I've always been saying that I want to have a show someday. Um, but I I think as time goes on, I'm not really sure if that's like the dream anymore. Hmm. I still like doing like the solo work like on YouTube. Well, not exactly. So like, I have a team obviously but right as in just like just something that i have full control over I, I feel like if i um delve into tv and whatnot i'll slowly lose that control because yeah. I, I know i know what the industry is is kind of like like i've heard how it is um but the reason why i went on youtube in the first place is because i have full control and it's like what I, what i make is a you know direct representation of my ideas um so I don't know. Like it, it, I feel like it would be nice to have a show, but I, I don't. I think I see myself probably pursuing something else, mm -hmm. like way down the line once right. YouTube is dead. There, yeah. When you when a showrunner grabs it, there might be um, they put their hands in it. But when you yeah. have a creative team of friends and like minded people, you you the original exactly. vision is still intact. Yeah, but that that's not how it the industry works you know? right they, they toss in all their dirty hands and whatnot mm -hmm. they're unsanitized hands <laughs> yeah gross them corona hands so your your team i see that now you have anywhere from about like two to five animators working on every video 
Yeah. How's that working with a with a crew? Uh, it's been steady. I mean, I've I've had, um, like, pretty much the same people helping out the past couple of years. Um, some of them are still students, so obviously I have to account for their schedule. But nowadays, like you know, school's not even around anymore. Um, so they've had more free time to work. But it's just, uh, I guess, unfortunate that you know their school life has been affected. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, working at, as a team is pretty great because it, it's definitely taken off a lot of the load. Like, if I was trying to do all this by myself, it would definitely take me, um, like, a whole month or two. Yeah. Like, it, like if I didn't want to stress it. Like, the the recent videos, they're definitely doable by myself. I, I would just not be happy by the end of production. Like, I want to be comfortable like after a video yeah, you don't want to you don't wanna always feel like you're crunched yeah is that annoying right. too to, to think oh if you miss an upload date because no matter how steady you want to make your upload schedule things happen in life it's it's healthy and normal to take a step back mm-hmm. from creating content do you yeah. find that a little a little peeving when sometimes when people don't respect that uh definitely at first but you know like i understand where they're coming from they like it, they're coming with good intentions, but yeah, I, I get the ignorance, but you know, it's, it, that's just how it is. I, I don't really let it peeve me too much. And you, you influence a lot of other people, a lot of story time animators have kind of followed in your footsteps, but who influences you? Um, like currently or how, like it could be whoever you're, whoever kind of got when you got started or now I know the influences are always changing as you kind of change. Um, I, I guess when I first started, it was other YouTubers, like the, the genre of, I guess what is now called the, the story time animations. I don't, I don't know who coined that term, but I guess that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was pretty much just Suzy doing it at the time. So he was my direct inspiration for, um, yeah, like the type of content. Uh, and also, uh, during the time, I was watching a lot of Rooster Teeth. And yep. they have um, the, that show called The the Animated Adventures. Um, they're a little, bit, a little bit more simplified, but I liked... Yeah, like they, they kind of had the same feel, and I wanted to do the same thing, too. Yeah, so I had to live, like, probably the first two years of my YouTube life as the Suzy copy... <laughs> Yeah, but, well, that's yeah. it's not not copy, but inspired from, especially in a new the, genre. The it's, Susie. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay, Dom. Yeah, but yeah. but then like it, it just became a train. Now like everyone, a lot of the people who came after me have just been called like copies of Domix, and like all <laughs> that kind of sucks because I know how that feels like. So I spent a lot of time trying to, you know, diffuse that tell people like you know everyone has their own identity it's okay to be inspired by people yeah but then again there are some people who are actually blatantly copying like carbon copy like take screenshots of my videos and like use them as assets and i'm like okay well well that's actually (laughs) i can't save you there (laughs) i know i trust me i know because i get emails from them like will you write me music please um they they ask they ask for the music uh and sometimes they're Sometimes they're legit. There's a couple I've done that are legit. They're just they're kids getting started. They're students, so you know I'll throw them a track here and there. Okay. Um, Dom, I like, I, like translator channels. Yeah, yeah. The translator channels are cool. There's the Italian Domic dub. That guy's cool. Yeah, they're they're probably like the only one I kind of like actually personally talked to and gave him the go. Yeah. There's Everyone a, else. <laughs> no. Yeah. There's a a Russian one that I felt was legit. I don't know. There's a lot of them. It's it's also crazy to have your 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 music out there, dude. There's been so many times where, luckily, you're talking over my music, but there's been one or two where I've like changed it a little bit, and then I'll just like I'll be listening, watching YouTube, and I'll be like, oh my god, that's my music. What the heck, <laughs> <laughs> Dom? How many emails do you get in Russian, dude? Because there's so many people who think I'm you because they see my <laughs> link in the description, and I I've got so many Russian emails. It's absolutely wild. Uh, actually, I don't think I get any. Oh my God. They're all coming to me, dude. 
like one every couple months i don't know because sometimes it says like original music by chris in your description and they just click that yeah. link and that's the first link or uh, maybe it's one of the the translator channels and they just have your link in the description so they think oh it's oh, the only link it must be him i'll have to do some research in that <laughs> um yeah there's there's some do you feel like it, it must be overwhelming to know that if you check your phone there's someone trying to get a hold of you yeah at any given um, moment yeah it's it's tough like emails are, are were already like my weak point mm. and i just have to like just dig through a bunch of spam and, and whatnot you know yeah it's like third time's the charm with you you spam you three times and you finally respond <laughs> i'm just kidding please don't do that people don't. I, don't, I don't think anyone has actually been as determined as you Leave him alone. Oh, you hear that? I'm the worst, everyone. You hear that? <laughs> no, I mean it's it's led to some good connections. Um, yeah. Definitely. I mean, I'm I'm eternally grateful um, <clears throat> to be a musician. Have a steady composing gig. Number one is so challenging. Uh, I'm friends with the guy who writes music for Rick and Morty, and he uh, I've heard about his uh, career and stuff. And so, getting a, a consistent gig, no matter the nature, to write music is huge achievement for a musician. So, very grateful for that. Um. But, you know, it's it's also it's it's tough to try to like upload every week for you. And, and I know that it's it's a lot on you, but you're doing it. You're you're making yeah. it happen. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So well done. I'm surprised. Like, you know, there have been a lot of animators that kind of, I guess, drop the game like years in there. I remember a lot of animators who aren't really around anymore. And it just makes me realize, like, oh, my God, I've been around this long. Yeah. I surprised myself. Like, 2012 started uploading. Probably been working oh. before that, right? Yeah. Yeah. And Actually, I guess I guess this year would mark the 10 years of like the actual like Domics brand. Because I, I made started making comics in summer of 2010, and now it's 2020. So that's pretty amazing. Uh, maybe I should do something special. <laughs> totally. Face reveal. <laughs> You've already done that. <laughs> Uh, and it must help to have a crew with you too like jom and i've written some stuff for jom and l boy uh he yeah. does those great helmet bros videos yeah those are such a blast to write for um that's yeah, it's good to have that crew indirectly worked with riot then since you made helmet bros yeah right i can tell actually i had some like uh, guys who played league of legends in my college dorm i never knew what it was but they hit me up on on facebook they're like oh dude do you write music for this I was like, oh, yeah, I did. They're like, <laughs> I'm like, this is our hyperventilating. <laughs> so that, that's pretty cool. I'm, I'm into that. I'm into that. So, Dom, with, with you being in kind of like the, the public light, and a lot of your stories are obviously very personal. Is there any oh, yeah. time you've shared kind of like a personal story and you made it into a video and then you kind of look back on and you're like, man, maybe I shouldn't have shared that. Or, you know, now oh, I kind yeah. of feel uncomfortable with people knowing all that. Uh. In terms of comfort, I like I try to be pretty discreet with what delicate information I put in the videos. Like, you mm -hmm. know, if there's ever an actual person, I usually change their name, um, um, unless you know, like, what about their address? Do you change their address and their social? Oh no, <laughs> for sure not. <laughs> but that, I mean, they've you got to know that they probably have watched some of these videos. Like, if you're talking oh, about breakups sure. or crushes. Yeah, sure breakups one the crushes one not not so much but um like i it's like the stories aren't really that unique i'd say like the the thing with the stories i share is like they're i'd say they're common day like stories everyone you know goes through those topics like crushes and and, and stuff so um yeah like I, I never really had to worry too much i the the only thing is um what i'd probably do differently is I guess my perspective on things like being much older now than when I made the, the breakup series. Like if I were to redo those stories, like it, it would have probably a definitely like a completely different tone, mm. probably more lighthearted, honestly. Um, but I don't know, I, like back then I, I just made it like super dramatic at times. And well, people like that too. And, and, it, and yeah. you know what? It's okay. Cause it feels dramatic at the time. It, it's, the same for everyone you look back on it and it's like oh it's not a, not such a big deal but at the time it's like i'm going to perish this is the end of the line for me it's the end it's uh, the end of days yeah but i don't know maybe i actually thought about that one like one time maybe i should revisit those stories and kind of 
just do like a like a catch up with things because a lot of those stories evolve because a lot of them were made with um, a little bit of a lack of information but since it's happened you know I've reconnected with some of those people and I've had I have like new information now so yeah know, maybe like a closure series <laughs> after breakups right well have you ever had someone seriously upset that you told the story um no not really because you know the stories are true like what would they be upset about right that i think one of them um uh one of them was actually uh like college roommates with a friend of mine and they told me that she watched it and then tried to like explain herself about you know what things weren't true in the video and and stuff but then you know like everyone all our mutual friends like knew the truth so yeah she didn't really have much backup but well, that's also hard too. If you you date someone, then next thing you know, you're like the premise of an animated thing, and you and you don't get to say your side of the story either. And you're like, yeah, oh god. But then that's that's the thing. Like I I don't know. I I tell people not to really watch the breakup stories as like, um, you know, as, as truly advice for themselves. Like they just got to watch it as if you know it's just a story on its own. Because obviously, I made it with like some flaws in logic and, and whatnot yeah well that's the beautiful thing about it is everyone's path is different for love and this sort of thing and some people's path is short and some people's path is long but no matter what it's always gonna be a road that you've got to walk down so you shouldn't get discouraged if some people find someone and that's it and they're and they're done their journey's over for some people that journey lasts you know a lifetime but it's the journey you got to enjoy so it's good that you you document those things at the time with how you're feeling. I think that's really special and important. It's probably good mm-hmm. to look back on it, no matter how much you might be like, you shouldn't have said that. Um, <laughs> but when I watch that, you know, I I don't I don't feel like that at all. I feel like, oh wow, that was really entertaining. I w- yeah, want him to make yeah. more. Like, that's 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 my goal. Like a lot of my stuff should just be taken as entertainment. Mm-hmm. You know, with a grain of salt. Yeah, I'm thinking of just breaking up with you as your composer just so I can get another breakup video. I really want one of those. Part part six. Part six. So. How my composer broke my heart. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Dom, what, what do you have to say to anyone who wants to get into animation, someone who wants to create video, someone who even wants to start writing music or any sort of creative uh, process? I always like to end my show with uh, some wise words. Yeah, but like a lot of wise words are kind of stale at this point because like they they probably already know like what I'm gonna say. You know, mm-hmm. like if, if you're if you wanna thinking of pursuing something, you you kind of just have to go for it because that's what I did. You know, I like the turning point for my decision with Domix is I was just you know at the I was done school and I just didn't feel like doing any more architecture. So I was like, you know what, let's just let's just do art. Let's see how it goes. And, you know, you can't expect results right away. Like, me getting this far was just, you know, years of of work. Like, I I did uh, comics, you know, (laughs) I did game stain. You know, you you do a lot of things to get to where you are. Yeah. Um, But your path is your path. So regardless of how long it takes or if it deviates into something else, you just got to do stuff, you know. Yeah. Just like your love life. It's a path you walk. Enjoy it while you're walking it. Yeah, exactly. All right. Thank you, everyone, for watching the Tunes and Tunes podcast. Check out shapingwaves.com. The referral link is in the description. You can also listen to this podcast on Spotify, but you're going to miss the pics of Big Thick Dom. So make sure you subscribe for more music and fun. Dom, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be your friend and, and uh, your almost like employee. I appreciate it, and I uh, look forward to creating more awesome stuff. Cool, man. Thanks for having me.